Today's video is a really fun one. Let's write an essay together using AI tools, but actually using as minimal as possible. So I know lots of you have asked me to give you concrete examples of how I would do this using a question, an example question, an actual text, rather than kind of just skimming over the surface. So in today's video, we are going to be doing exactly that. Um, however, I have really only picked out AI tools that I really think are useful and only where I think they are useful. So in today's video, we are going to be writing an essay in as short as as time span as possible, but as best as possible using the tools that we have available, but also using traditional resources. So when you're writing an essay, there are a few different stages of it. So the first stage is preparation and getting all the information together. Then you want to write the introduction, the main body, the conclusion. And once you've done those three parts, you then want to summarize and kind of just proofread, edit and check over it. So if you think about it, there are five different stages to writing an essay. So let's start off with stage number one, which is the preparation stage. So this stage is probably the most essential stage for building the foundation of your essay. So this is the stage where you really determine what your topic is about, you've picked out the research articles, you've figured out an outline, you've figured out the discussion points, you know what the most important aspects of your essay are. This is where everything really matters. So for this, you want to conduct some thorough research where you're just picking out research papers and you're collecting and collating all the data. And by the time you've done all of this, at the end, the aim is to have a thesis statement. So the thesis statement is a statement that determines your position for the discussion. It has created an argument and it essentially guides the entire essay towards the direction that you'll be discussing. Okay, and for this first part, I'd recommend that you use traditional tools like PubMed, Google Scholar, you're simply searching for the key terms and the key words for your essay. So let's say your essay, I'm going to be using an essay about neuroplasticity. So let's say your essay is about neuroplasticity, you might want to search for neural, brain, behavior, different search terms based on what it is that you are discussing. But what you can do to make the process a little bit easier for you is using the AI tool called Sight. So let's take a look at how I would do this. And this is kind of the first stage. So what I've said here is I've said, give me an outline for an essay about neuroplasticity. Um, and I've given it a title, something like a complete review of its mechanism, significance and its implication for human life. So let's see what it gives. The reason why I really like Sight over something like ChatGPT is because the references are actually true references. You can refer back to them and read into it in more depth. Whereas in ChatGPT, you don't get references and it isn't really academically legitimate. Okay, so as you can see here, I've been given a bit of a summary. Um, so it's given information just to summarize it. This essay aims to comprehensively review the mechanism, significance and implications, as I said. And then it's gone to a bit more detail for each of those topics and given me a reference for them. One of the reasons that I like Sight as well is because it gives you very recent references and I haven't really seen this on any other platform where you've got references that are actually from 2023, so literally this year, and everything's quite recent as you can see, 2022, 2015, 2020, 2020. Um, to there as well. So it's all very recent, which means that the information it's providing you is very relevant. And what you can do is you can say, okay, I think this is an interesting paper. Let me click into this and let me view the full text, which you of course have to do. And from there, you're able to log into the paper from your university access and you can go ahead and read it into more detail. So we're just starting off in the first stage is just a matter of doing research. We are not writing anything yet, we're just getting to the point where we're gathering information and we're gathering as much as we can to do with the topic to give us a nice essay breakdown that we can use when it comes to writing. So the next thing that I've done is I've then kind of broken it down even more. So now I've done lots of reading, I've gained all of the research papers that I want to kind of like save and I've saved them into my, my library. I usually tend to use Mendeley or I'll tend to use our discovery for this where I'm just saving it into my library as I find papers. So this is a continual process. This will take you, you know, a month, a few weeks, a few days, it depends on how much time you dedicate to it, but it's just reading and preparing to actually write. 
So the next thing that I'm going to do before I start writing is to generate an essay outline. Now you can do this on ChatGPT as well. I doesn't you don't have to use Cite. Um, but one thing that I really like on Cite is that because it has used references and it has used actual literature, it can give you a bit more of a scientific answer, a bit more of an academic answer. But like I said, you can do it on ChatGPT. Um, but just be aware not to copy and paste it. So I've said to give me an essay outline for 1000 words about neuroplasticity and this will give me an essay outline that I can then use to begin writing. So I have the introduction, so definition, importance and overview of the essay structure. I love that. That last sentence there is so key. Loads of students miss it out, but just overview of what's to come in the essay. Then the mechanisms of neuroplasticity, um, so the structure, the mo molecular mechanisms, the insights from studies, and then you've got research papers that you can refer to here, which is a good place to begin from. The significance of it, again, you've got the breakdown, the link between inflammation and childhood trauma, this is really interesting. Again, some research papers to, to kind of start you off from, um, implications, future directions, and a conclusion. So. Remember, in the conclusion, you want to make sure you give them a call to action, something to recap, maybe a question. So here it's saying, call for further research, final remarks, things like that. So this is now a really good place to begin from. So what I would do in th at this point is I would copy and paste this uh, outline to where I'm going to begin to write. So you can really write anywhere. You can write on Microsoft Word, you can write on Google Docs. Um, you can even write on another AI platform like Jenny. So it really is up to you where you go next, but I really want to minimize how much AI I'm actually going to be using just to make sure that we are doing it as ethically. And as you guys said, show me how you actually do it. So this is how I would do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this outline and I'm going to go over onto Word. So I've got the outline now. So now I know what I want to kind of structure it as. You don't have to keep this outline. You can then decide, actually, I don't really want to include childhood trauma and depression. I don't really think it's relevant or I don't think I'll be able to discuss it in as much depth. So maybe I'll get rid of that part. So I think that's maybe going to be like that. Uh, again, I don't think I'll be able to discuss this in that much depth. So maybe I'll get rid of that. And you know, you're going back and forth. You're referring to the text that you read originally, you're referring to the information that you read in the beginning, and you're kind of just going back and forth a little bit. Then you want to start to write. So what I would tend to do is I'll kind of just have this as a bit of a, I'll probably have kind of show it in a different color and maybe have it a little bit smaller so it's not in the way of what I actually want to start to write. And then now I will begin to write. So I might say neuroplasticity, is and then I'll get a definition for it. So what I'll do is I'll go to a research paper, I'll search here, what is the definition of neuroplasticity? Don't forget that you have probably read a lot of, a lot of papers already and you've gained lots of information. So you can most likely kind of pull out and extract the information as you need. But I'm just going to take an example here. What is it? Um, it is the brain's remarkable ability to, re to reorganize its structure, function, and its connections. So I'm going to take that. And obviously, like, we're not copying and pasting here. We are simply just kind of putting it down here so we have a good overview of what it is that we are about to write, and then we can modify it as we go along. So neuroplasticity describes the ability of the brain to, let's just say change. Yeah, change the structure, function, uh, and connections in response to external or internal stimuli. Now, this is just a, a quick one that I've written, but you can see how different it is. And I'm going to re-edit that again a bit later on, so I'll show you how we keep changing this. And then I would add a reference here, of course. Now you want to keep on doing this all the way through. So once I've kind of written my full introduction, I've got that done. The next thing I want to do is write the second part. And again, I'm just going to make it nice and small. So it's out of the way. Then I want to write the next part and I keep on building up my essay like that. When you write to the introduction, you need a really compelling hook. You need to make sure that you've kind of reeled the reader in. You want need to make sure that you give background information, so information that 
um, is able to clarify what your topic is to your reader. You want to give a preview with the main points and arguments of what is to come in the essay. The next part is writing the body. So as I showed you earlier, the next kind of two or three um, paragraphs are about the main body. Now in the main body, what you want to include is a very kind of clean structure. So the first thing is a topic sentence. So the topic sentence is an overarching sentence that um, introduces the paragraph, introduces the new idea and what's to come, and then you support it with evidence. So the second part is evidence. You want to give some evidence, supporting your argument by making sure that you cite properly. Then the next part is analyzing and explaining your point and the evidence that you've just given. So not just stating the evidence, but going into a little bit more depth. And here you can add some critique. So here you're able to actually get those higher grades by saying, not just this is what the or, this is what the author has said but this is also what the author could have meant in context to x y and z and then last but not least for every paragraph you want to have a transition so you're kind of encouraging the flow of ideas you've given the point you've given an explanation you've given some evidence what's the next point you're going to say connect it and have a transition sentence that allows you to join it onto the next paragraph and then last but not least is the conclusion so in the conclusion what you want to do is restate the thesis statement what was it that you were discussing in the first place? Mention it again and mention a kind of overview of your whole discussion. And then you also want to synthesize all the topics that you were speaking about, all the discussion points, and then have a closing remark and a call to action, maybe future work or a reflection, something like that. And then that's the end of the essay. Okay, and then number five. So you've written all the different sections. You now want to come to edit. So editing is really important. Up to this point, you probably haven't really checked your work and your spelling that much. You've just been writing. So now you want to edit. And for this, I would recommend using PaperPal or even Jenny.ai, but PaperPal is also a really good one that you can integrate onto your Word document. So here you can see that I've got my PaperPal app open up and I've also written my essay now. So I've got this full essay. Um, which actually is missing references, but let's ignore that for now. And so what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be asking it to do a few things. So of course, the number one thing is language. I need to make sure that all of the language is correct. There's a lot of things that are missing um, and a lot of things that are actually quite, they're not academically written, should I say that? Because when I was writing it, I was just kind of writing it as fast as possible, just getting my ideas onto paper. So there's a lot of things that could be corrected a great way of, of doing that automatically. And the great thing about PaperPal is that it is tailored for an academic audience and the machine has learnt through looking at academic text. So the words that they use, the synonyms that they use is you'll find, you'll definitely see they are academic based synonyms. Um, so one of the things I wanted to do was the introduction when I wrote it, I didn't really love how it sounded. So one of the things that you can do is you can say to make it sound more academic. So if you go here to Copilot, you can say make academic and what it will do is it make it sound more academic for you, which is fantastic. Love that. Oh, look at that. It sounds so much better. Make sure that you reference everything. So I'm going to add reference there to remind me to add it later. Um, you can also trim text. I, there was one section down here that was a little bit too long. So what you can do is you can go trim and you can trim it to make it a little bit shorter. And you know, last minute, you just need to cut down 100 words or 50 words and you're just stuck. This is really cool because it actually maintains the meaning of your text and it just gets rid of some words within it. So uh, you'll find that this is really helpful. Amazing, nice. And the last few things I thought I'd mention, but this is something extra, is you can add a title if you want. You can add um, an abstract, keywords, so many different things that you can do using the PaperPal tool. So I hope that was helpful to actually visualize and see how I were to actually write an essay. Um, from the point where I'm just researching, finding information, gathering as much resources as I possibly can, you really don't have to use so many AI tools. In fact, you don't have to use any of them. You can just stay as traditional as possible. But if you do want to maybe help speed up the process or make it more efficient or pull out papers that you may not have already found or generate outlines for you if you're struggling with something like that, then this is definitely a great way of doing it. I hope you found this useful and if you did like it, do let me know in the comments down below what more you want to see from me and if you want to see something similar and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.